In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about setting up our grid to match the Unreal Engine 4. We're also going to scale our object, our sword game object, to fit the Unreal Engine 4 scaling. And just make a few changes as well to the pivot so that our pivot point for rotating our sword object is will be located at dead center of the environment. So to get started, the change for the Unreal Engine 4 versus the Unreal Engine 3 is it used to be set up in the Unreal Engine 3 where 16 Maya units was equivalent to one foot in the real world. Well, that's been changed now to where one Maya unit is equivalent to one centimeter. That's more of a universal format. Most game engines do use that scaling where one unit within Maya is equal to one centimeter within the game engine. So this will make things a bit more uniform if you're hopping between different engines. That's not always the case, so you have to look at the documentation on the engine itself. So with the Unreal Engine 4, let's go ahead and take a look at what's happened here. Currently, we have it set up to where this point here is at 0, 0, 0, but if I were to move this over, and I had snap to grids on, this should be at 16x, because this is 16 my units. If you kind of were to count each of these little dots here, that would be 16 of them. And this would be one square foot in the Unreal Engine 3. Well, that's no longer the case. We need this to be at 30.48 Maya units. Because there are 30.48 Maya units, or centimeters, in one foot. So we'd have to change our grid. And because of the one centimeter equals one Maya unit, it makes this math super easy to do however you want to set up your grid. And let's take a look at how we do that. We'd go up to Display, go to Grid, and just open up our grid options here. Now, this was our original one. What I do is I just drop this subdivision down to 16 and I'm going to leave it there from now on. I'm never going to change this subdivision out of 16. I'll just always leave this at 16 because this makes the math very easy. All I have to do is open up the calculator and however far apart I want this grid to snap to, I would just multiply it by 16. So let's say I wanted my grid to snap every 30.48. So I would just take this, I'd say 16 times 30.48 centimeters, which is one foot, and press enter. And this is how I would set it up. I just take this number here and paste it in here. Click apply and close. And now this grid is going to snap to 30.48. And I'll prove that by going to display or window, general editors, component editor. And you can see that this is now at 30.48. This is 30.48 my units, which also means that it's 30.48 centimeters. And if you looked it up, and you Googled it, or however, you could see that there are 30.48 centimeters in one foot. So this is one square foot now. This whole square right here. This is one square foot, this is one square foot, this is one square foot. Now this is great for if you're doing organic modeling or just prop modeling, where you don't really need it to snap to a grid point. The problem that you run into when you're using a point 48, and if I were to try to create walls based on this point 48, and I was butting these walls up inside of the Unreal Engine, it's not gonna work very well because the Unreal Engine will not snap to a 30.48. It won't snap to a 1.48 or a one point anything. It'll only snap to a one or a five or a 10. That's the only snapping options that you're gonna get within the Unreal Engine. So what you have to do when you are changing this is let's say I'm creating walls and I want to be able to set these walls up so they'll snap to a specific number, a one, a two, a three, a four, a specific integer not a double integer, okay? It has to be a single number, so you can't have a double in there. No points when you're creating walls. So you'd have to just change this up. And again, how far apart do I want my grid settings? Okay, so now I just say 16, so I'll open up our grid again. Let's say, okay, let's say I'm creating walls, and I wanna change these walls to where they're gonna snap on my grid every 10 my units every 10 centimeters. So all I'd have to do is just take 16 times 10. Whoops, I messed that up. 16 times 10 is 160, which we could have done that in our head. And then you just type in 160. So now if I have 160 in here and I click apply and close, now these my units are 10 inches apart. So if I go here and I click this, update it, you see it's 10. So now I can create these at 10 and snap to grid to create my wall objects. So whenever I go into Maya, I can butt them up against each other using the snap to grid set to 10. They'll be able to butt up against each other set to 10 because in Maya, the grid was set up to snap to 10. So again, 
I want to scale this object, our game object, based on a real world person. To do that, I need feet because I'm from the US. That's how I measure, I measure in feet. So I wanna set up my grid to measure in feet since I'm just creating a sword. So I'll go ahead and again, I will type in 30.48 times 16. That's our number that we were talking about before that we're gonna leave it at from now on. We got 487.68. So I'll just go up to display, open up the grid, it's already six to 16, so all I have to do is just take 47.68, copy it, and paste it in here. And click Apply and Close. So again, you never have to change the 16. You have to determine how far apart do you want your Maya units, then multiply it by 16, and add it into those two numbers inside of your grid settings. So display grid, and you just plop that number in there, and now my setting will be to 30.48. And that's all there is to that. So let's go ahead, now that we have 30.48, and let's create a human person reference. So all we're gonna do is I'm just gonna delete these points here. I don't need that object anymore, so just delete that. I'm gonna take everything and unhide all of it. So with everything unhid, and I'm also gonna take this out to reference mode, I want everything that I scale to also scale uniformly with our game object in case in the future I want to make changes as well. So I'm going to unhide everything. I'm going to scale them together. So before I do that, I want to set the pivot, all right, of all these objects. So I'm going to select everything. I'm just going to marquee select, make sure I get everything in the scene. And if you press insert on your keyboard, that's going to take you into pivot mode. You'll notice that our little widget here has changed. That's because now we're moving the pivot of all our objects. So then we'll come up here, we'll drop this down, I want you to select Absolute Transform in this option here, and then just type in 0, 0, and 0. And that's going to move our pivot to the dead center of the world at 0, 0, 0. Then we can go ahead and just press Insert again to leave pivot mode. Now what is the pivot really? Before we move that pivot, it's where your tool is located for this. You notice that before we moved it, it was up here and now it's down here. Now if I press E, you'll notice that it's going to rotate based on the location of the pivot. That's really what the pivot is. It's the location, the center of the object itself. And this is what's considered the center of the object is where the pivot is located. So that's how we're basing our center. So now that we have this all set up to scale, we can go ahead and scale it. But before we do, we need to be able to have some kind of visual reference of the size of a human being. So what I like to do is just create a person, right? Or rather a box replicating the height of a person. So I'll go ahead and turn on interactive creation. So go to create polygon primitives and you want to go ahead and check this box, Interactive Creation. And then I also want to have Snap to Grids turned on, so make sure you enable Snap to Grids. And we're going to drag out a 4x4 box. So I'll go ahead and select our box, and I'll just drag out this 4x4. Then I'm going to drag it up six times. So I'm going to hold down my left key and just drag it up one, two, three, four, five, six snaps. So let it snap six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is a six foot tall character or rather a reference of one, but it kind of is hard to see our sword with this big old box in the way. So what we're going to do is just add it to a layer. So we'll go ahead and select the layer. I'll double click that layer and I'm going to call this the CHR character reference. And you can just pick any color here. I'll just select white. And I'm going to set this to a T, which is going to make it transparent. It's basically just a trace of the object itself. Now let's go ahead and select all of our objects because we want to scale them together so we can make changes to them together. And we'll go ahead and use our scale tool. So how high do we want to have this be? Well, I'm going to go into the front view. So I'm going to press spacebar and then go into spacebar again. I'm going to make this roughly four feet tall for my sword. You could make it even more specific if you'd like to measure it. But I'm just going to go ahead and scale everything down together to where it's maybe just a little over four feet tall. Now I can see this is scaled to the game and it's scaled a lot better than it was before. And I can go ahead and hide all of these things now because I don't need them. You could leave this uh, character reference visible if you'd like. I'll go ahead and hide everything. And I'll go ahead and place our sword high poly in reference and our game object I can leave out. So now this game object is set to scale for the Unreal Engine. So if I were to export this as an FBX, import it into the game, it would be scaled to where this blade is roughly four feet tall. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start creating a character that's going to be used to hold our swords. Now we have a sword, we need somebody to hold it. So we're going to create a character using an entirely different modeling technique from start to finish. We're going to use some of the same techniques we've been using before, but the process that we're going to use is going to be entirely different.
If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.